Well, here we go with your Phil Steele Plus Tour with selections. Now, last October, we were red hot on Phil Steele Plus, and hopefully we'll continue on that way this year. Eight free selections for you, complete reasoning behind each of them, and show you around how to use Phil Steele Plus. Remember, if you're an Inside the Press Box member, you get Phil Steele Plus for free. Make sure you're using it each and every week, and I'm going to show you all the fun features that are on Phil Steele Plus on this tour today. Plus, you get those free plays. Well, let's start off, and speaking of Inside the Press Box, let's start off with an Inside the Press Box game, and it's going to be Washington against Stanford uh, in this uh, matchup here. And let's click on the Inside the Press Box and see what we got going on. Now, this is your box score for the game for Inside the Press Box. And as you can see, it is projecting, this is your yardage play of the week, Washington with 369 yards, Stanford with 334. The Stanford Cardinal are actually getting 17 points in this game. So that's a, a pretty large number for a team that's only going to get outgained by 35 yards. So the yardage play is clearly Stanford. Take you a little bit more inside that. When you get inside the press box, you get all these fine features each week, a complete breakdown of each game. You get my complete write-up on the game here. You get my computer's forecast on the game here. All these interesting stats, who led the team, things like that, all available each and every week on Inside the Press Box. And when you do get an Inside the Press Box uh, subscription, you can save yourself some uh, big bucks on it right here. Uh, if you type in the code STEEL19, you can take $20 off any subscription. So the college is now all the way down to $129 for the rest of the year. Save 20 bucks, you get it for 109 when you type in this code, STEEL19. Inside the Press Box Pro is down to 129 for the season. You get it down to 109 when you type in the code, STEEL19. And if you want to get them both, it's just 219 Once again, with the code, STEEL19, it's all the way down to 119 Just go to InsideThePressBox.com to sign up for Inside the Press Box. And remember, you get Phil Steel Plus free with your Inside the Press Box subscription. Or you can go to our website, which is uh, philsteel.com, click on the homepage, go to the store, and sign up for Inside the Press Box right here and get it for the college, the NFL, or that. So either way, but insidethepressbox.com is your home for Inside the Press Box. Now, when you go to the Phil Steel page, you click on FBS Info, click on Team Pages, we're going to take you back to this Washington-Stanford game and a couple things I want to point out to you. As mentioned, the uh, forecast here for, by my computer is saying 369 to 334. So anytime you've got a team that's only going to get out game by 35 yards, that's getting 17 points. That looks pretty good. Now, we'll take a look at the series history here. We're going to click on that. When you click on the team right here, this down here under the schedule, you see how these are in blue. This one's brown because I, I clicked on it yesterday. You can see that Stanford's pretty much controlled the series. They're ten and four straight up in the series, and ten and or ten and four against the spread in the series as well. The home team has won four in a row in the series. You know that well, over here, these green means if they covered or not. The red means they did not cover. But the win means if the home team won or lost. So as you could tell, the home team has won the last four in the series. Stanford beat Washington 30-22 at home. They beat them 31-14 at home. They beat them 31-28 at home, 65-21 at home, 34-14 at home. They won the last five home games. This gives you the last 22 years matchups. Not only who won the game, what the spread was, what the home team did, if there was an upset, but the complete stats on the game. So you could tell if a team can run the football on the other team. And uh, it's really interesting. Here's what the rankings were for each game. So Stanford's not been ranked the last couple of years and yet uh, done well. In fact, in those last five years, they've won by an average of 18.4 points per game. The home team is 7-1 and one straight up. If we take a look here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 wins, 7 or 6-2 and two against the spread. So Stanford's at home for this one. Stanford, by the way, under David Shaw, if you look in the magazine, look at the home record, you'll see he's 45-9 and nine straight up at home. Meanwhile, Washington, while they're 15-1 and one straight up at home recently, just 7-4 and four on the road. And keep in mind, last week, while Washington beat USC 28-14, to 14, uh, USC was intercepted at the 1 and stopped on downs at the 4. Clearly a closer game than the final score. 
And I think Oregon's the best team in the North. And Stanford only lost to Oregon by 15. They're getting 17 here. By the way, look at this. They held Oregon to 320 yards in that game. In fact, for the season, Stanford holding opponents to 44 yards per game below their season average. Washington's at 63 below, so the defenses are very close. You wouldn't think that, get blown out by USC and UCF. But Stanford's D is playing pretty well this year. So add it all up. You're inside the press box. Yardage game. Oh, by the way, Stanford's taking on the fourth toughest schedule. Northwestern, USC, UCF, Oregon, all in those first four games. Washington's taking on a much easier schedule. Eastern Washington, Hawaii, BYU. Uh, So the schedule strength also goes to Stanford in this one. You're inside the press box. Yardage game of the week is to take Stanford plus the 17 over Washington. All right, let's move to your workbook page for this week. And the workbook page, we're going to go to Toledo against Western Michigan. And this is what you get with the workbook. You not only get the uh, logbook here so you could fill it in all season long, but look at all these ATS records you get. Those are all back the last 10 years. We've got some in the magazine, but this takes you a lot deeper. How you do as an underdog, an underdog by three, single digit, double digit, 20 or more versus ranked teams, top 10 teams, conference dog, conference favorite. It's all in there. When you look at Toledo, uh, let's focus here on the straight up record and on the road. Uh, Western Michigan is came into the season six and six on the road. They lost at Michigan State, lost at Syracuse. They are six and eight on the road. That is interesting. Let's go to, to the Toledo workbook page now. And we see that Toledo's pretty tough in the glass bowl. In fact, under Jason Candle, five and one, six and oh, five and two. So that's eleven, sixteen, and three. And so far this year, Toledo has beat Murray State 17-3 and and beat BYU 18-3 and straight up at home. Now, I'm bringing up straight up records here because Toledo is just a one-and-a-half point favorite in this game. So that's uh, – you get some nice line value here in the fact that Toledo basically just has to win the football game. And that's why I bring up the straight up records in this one is because it's uh, basically a win situation uh, in this matchup, uh, Western Michigan. Let's take a let's go to the team pages now. Oh, by the way, when you get the workbook, uh, let me show you. Uh, we don't do a, an NFL page, but the NFL workbook page. Here's the New England Patriots, and as you can see, you get the complete spread records. You get the last five years here on the left. You can actually get the last twenty years records for New England. Who the annual leaders were, who the coach has been each year. Huh? Bill Belichick's been there quite some time. Much like the magazine, you also get over-under spreads. You get against the spread records. All this is in the uh, NFL part of the workbook magazine. And when you do sign up for the workbook, uh, use the code SAVE5PS. You take $5 off the college and pro workbook. Now, I can't discount this, guys, because the workbook costs so much to produce, costs so much to ship. But, I mean, you're getting yourself 365 pages 60 pound paper so you can write on it all year long. Regular price 4070 with the code just 3570. And once again, you could go to the uh, if you click over here, you go to the home page or just click on the Phil Steel store here and you can get the workbook is right here. Here's your workbook and put that code in and you drop that down to 3570. But let's continue on with this Toledo against Western Michigan matchup. And here I'm going to have to get back to the home page. And FBS info, team pages, and we're going to put the visitor on the left. You know I like to put the visitor on the left, the home team on the right. There's Western Michigan. Let's go get ourselves Toledo. And this is how I line them up each, every single game. I go through at least twice a week. Just line them up side by side, and you'd be amazed what you can catch out of this. All right, so here's Western. Here's Toledo. Now look at the difference, Western home and away. At home, they beat opponents by an average of 45 to 13. On the road, they're losing by 27 per game. At home, they're out gaining opponents by 163 yards per game. On the road, minus 109. They're allowing 6.3 yards per carry, giving up 75% completions. Toledo uh, is plus 100 yards per game at home, minus 111 yards per game on the road. So you clearly have a very good home team that's good against the spread, good straight up at home against a team that's weak on the road in Western Michigan. And on the season, uh, I think you'll find that uh, Toledo, getting this one at home is a pretty big thing. Also, let's click on the series. Remember, come down here, you can click on the series. We find that Toledo's actually 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 2 in the series straight up. 
So that's a pretty nice thing. Once again, they're only laying one and a half. So straight up records are very important in this particular matchup. And Toledo has it all going for him. Series history and a big home away advantage. And it's my workbook game of the week. Toledo minus one and a half over Western Michigan as a workbook game of the week. All right, now let's play around with what we got going on here on Phil Steele Plus. And we're going to take a look at this next matchup. And it is UAB against Rice. Now, last week, UAB did not cover against Western Kentucky. But as you guys, if you watch the game, you know that UAB had a 20 to 14 first down edge, 298, 222 yard edge. The culprit? How about Tyler Johnson tossing four interceptions, doggone it? That's unusual for Tyler Johnson. Uh, you know, last year, uh, Tyler threw nine interceptions all year. Here he had four in one game, he only had two all season long. That was on the road. But let's look at the last two years and how UAB does at home. Look at our defense at home. Uh, last year at home, they allowed 13 points per game, 264 yards per game in their home games. This year, once again, they've had two home games. They are allowing at home uh, 225 yards per game, and they are allowing uh, the opponents 179 yards below their season average. This is a UAB defense that gets after you. They've got 15 sacks on the season. Eight of them have been in the two home games. They will indeed get after you. Now let's take a look at Rice on the road and their offense. Uh, I think this goes back to last year. If you look at Rice, uh, last year uh, Rice had 282 yards per game their last six games. If you take away this Hawaii game, Southern Miss, Wake Forest, FIU, North Texas, Louisiana Tech, and LSU, those six road games, they averaged just 282 yards per game. So far this year on the road, 255 yards per game. They're holding the post 179 below their season average. That means Rice is going to struggle to move the ball and score here. Don't expect a high-scoring game, but clearly UAB's defense is going against an offense that struggles on the road. I like that matchup. I like the fact that UAB was better than the final score last week. I like the fact that UAB is 7-2-1 against the spread as a home favorite. And then if you look at the series history, once again, we'll come down here and click on the series history. Look at the two matchups they've had recently. UAB won 52-21, to and last year, how about 42 to nothing? And that was on the road they beat Rice 42 to nothing. Now, what do you expect in the line to be with all that information? Probably about 17, right? No, nope, it's nine and a half. Or nine, a single-digit favorite for UAB at home against Rice. So I'm going to take UAB with that defense at home, and they've been extremely good at home, 7-2-1 against the spread, to get this one over Rice this week. The UAB defense at home, minus 9.5 over Rice. Now here's a game no one's talking about. I mean no one. I, I do radio shows all over the country, and no one's asked me about this one, and believe me, I didn't expect anybody to ask me about this one. It's going to be Liberty against New Mexico State. Wow. It's a marquee matchup of the week, huh, guys? Well, anyway, the things I noticed from this one, the home team, and once again, we'll click down here, click on Liberty, and we get the home team record. Uh, this is missing the 2017 matchup, but the home team in this one, that's because Liberty was a FCS foe at that time. Uh, at Liberty, they lost by seven, but they were getting seven and a half. Home to Liberty, they beat them 49-41, and the previous meeting was at home for New Mexico State, and they won. So the home team is 3-0 and straight up uh, in this series, and uh, that is a nice place to start. And then uh, New Mexico State's actually 3-0 and against the spread in the series. They covered that game that was on the road last year. A couple other things I'd like to point out here uh, is that New Mexico State in that road game at Liberty last year, let's go down 2018, uh, home to Liberty, they outgained them 567 to 518. On the road, they had a 396, 295 yard edge. So they actually had the yardage edge in both games last year. Now, they're a four point home dog for this because they're winless. But look who the heck New Mexico State's played this year Washington State, Alabama, San Diego State at New Mexico, and Fresno State. Yeah, they lost all five games, but they've actually been playing better as of late. Only got outgained by San Diego State by 68 yards. New Mexico, they took them down, only lost by three. And Fresno's a pretty doggone good team, only outgained by 71 yards. So they're playing pretty well uh, right now. And Liberty is a team that played a much softer schedule. Louisiana, Buffalo, Hampton. They got New Mexico at home as opposed to on the road. 
and Liberty has got to they're minus 13, they're minus 178. But if you look at the schedule strength, New Mexico State's taken on my 11th toughest schedule, including Alabama and Washington State. Liberty, the number 121 schedule. And if you look at Liberty last year on the road, loss, they did beat New Mexico on the road. They lost to New Mexico State, lost to UMass, lost to Virginia, lost to Auburn. And so far this year, they lost to Louisiana on the road. So they are 1-6 and six on the road. 0-1 oh is an away favorite. And they're favored by four points here. I think you're going to see New Mexico State play better down the stretch, get some wins. They are not that horrible of a team. They've just played the 11th toughest schedule. They were an underdog in all five games. They're an underdog here, but I think they pull the upset at home. I'm going to take New Mexico State. And the line was seven when I started doing this. It has dropped to four, which is pretty smart. But I would still think New Mexico State can pull the outright upset. So the game no one's talking about or will watch, I'm going to go with New Mexico State, plus four over Liberty, huge schedule strength advantage here. Let's take a look at a series history game. And we've been delving into the series history. By the way, uh, if you take a look, let's say New Mexico State, it gives you individual player stats. This is every team, every game FBS. So you can see Josh Atkins having a pretty good year. Didn't do well uh, ratio-wise against Fresno State or San Diego State, a couple of super tough teams. He's played some pretty tough defenses. You could argue that this might be the weakest defense he's taken on this year compared to New Mexico where he hit 30 of 47 for 335. You can see that Huntley had a couple of, it didn't really get rolling, but now 114, 82 yards lately. I love this feature, and it is updated every week, the individual player stats for every team. Uh, we'll take a look at, uh, as an example, I'm going to line Pitt up here on the left. And when I put Pitt on the left, let's go to individual player stats. Last week they sat six or seven, maybe even eight starters, including quarterback Kenny Pickett. He probably could have played had they needed him, but they went with Patty against Delaware. They struggled a little bit. They sat A.J. Davis, their top running back in that game. They sat Vincent Davis. Uh, Pickett sat the game. So they sat a lot of their big guys last week. Those guys will all be back this week against Duke. That's why I love these individual player stats. Uh, start charts we haven't got. Uh, oh, yeah, they are updated for some teams, and you could tell who started each of the games. Gives you a good idea. I like to focus in on these start charts when you get to them on the offensive line. If you see the same offensive line together all year, odds are they're playing pretty good. If you see the offensive line's got a whole bunch of different starting combinations, odds are they're struggling. I also like to look here, Pitt's rush defense. Now, they lost two defensive linemen to injury. I question what they were going to do. They're playing pretty doggone good D. In fact, look at these numbers out here. They are holding foes to 125 yards per game below their season average, and that doesn't even include the Delaware, which was 297 below. They held Ohio to a season low, UCF to a season low, Delaware to a season low, Penn State to a second season low, and Virginia number two. Uh, they actually were outgained Penn State by seven yards. This is a pretty good pit team that gets their starters back this week. They're taking on Duke, and Duke has played – uh, you know, Duke disappointed me. Last year I had him in the magazine higher than most. So I was a Duke fan last year, and they disappointed me with some of these games. Losing at home to Virginia by 14, losing at home to Virginia Tech by 17. These were games I expected them to win. But in the preseason, I expected them to beat Wake Forest. At the end of the year, there was question marks, and Wake just came in and trounced them. I was shocked the way Duke played last year, especially with Daniel Jones, that guy that's starting for the New York Giants at quarterback. So Duke let me down last year. So I was probably down a little bit on them. They've played better than expected. But, of course, they played NCANT, Middle Tennessee, and uh, Virginia Tech was a good game last week. They beat them 45-10. to 10. But they have struggled a little bit at home. In fact, uh, Duke uh, has, is just 6-12 and 12 against the spread as a home favorite. So that's not a great home favorite record. And we saw last year they were favored at home in the magazine. I expect them to win those games at home, and they lost most of them. They are about a five-point favorite in this game. So when we look at Duke, they are playing good D. They're holding the opponents to 76 yards per game below their season average. Uh, but offensively, they're actually gaining 39 yards below what their opponents normally allow. So that's a pretty surprising number there. Uh, at minus 58 against Middle Tennessee, plus 93 and minus 152. Minus 39, Pitt holding the opponents to 125 yards per game below. So I like that matchup. I think Pitt can slow this Duke offense down. Uh, Duke was a beneficiary of some turnovers last week uh, against Virginia Tech. And then you looked at the series history right down here. Click on series history. You can see that Pitt has won uh, the last four games and they've covered all four. So that's a 
Nice factor to have. There's been four upsets. I like this little feature out here. This has been a series where the underdog pulls the upset. Four times in the last five years, the underdog has pulled the upset. Pitt's the underdog. They're a five-point dog. Pitt's played extremely well as an away dog. I talked how Duke is a poor home favorite. Well, Pitt's Narduzzi is 13-6 and six as an away dog. I think he's knocked off a couple of top five teams on the road, and this year nearly beat Penn State on the road. So a very good away dog versus a very poor home favorite. Pitt's got the, the, the defense to stay in this one. Uh, I like Pitt plus the five over Duke, and that's going to be my series history play for this week. Still got the NFL coming up, but let's delve into the FCS. And, and by the way, Phil Steele Plus, this stuff you're looking at, you get it free with Inside the Press Box, so sign up for Inside the Press Box. But if you don't sign up for Inside the Press Box, you can come over here and get Phil Steele Plus for the rest of the year. The regular price right now for Phil Steele Plus for the rest of the year. You can have all this stuff all October, all November, all December, all January. College and NFL is $59. That comes out to about 15 bucks a month, which comes out to a few dollars a week. With this code, winners, type it in when you go to Phil Steele Plus, just $54. Or get it free with your Inside the Press Box subscription. And we're about to delve into the FCS. If you want to get the FCS team pages only, if you just want to play around with the FCS, and there are so many FCS games and there's so much line value in the FCS. This is where we had a huge record last year. We was in a lot of these FCS games. Just 24 bucks the rest of the year with the code 19. And let me show you what you get with the FCS and the reason we're picking some of these games. Let's start out with a couple of teams we touched on last week. Houston Baptist and Incarnate Word. Now, Houston Baptist is at home for Incarnate Word this week, so I should really put Incarnate Word on the left. Let's go back there to the FCS. And we're going to put team pages, and we're going to put Incarnate Word on the left. And we're going to come over here, and we'll go to FCS. And we're going to team pages, and we're going to put Houston Baptist on the right. Now, I mentioned last year, there were so many FCS teams that had poor records that completely turned around the next year. And there were so many FCS teams that had been so good that actually had poor records last year, or just average records. Well, Houston Baptist, that team, they were poor last year, but they had everybody back this year. Uh, and boy, have they looked different. They only lost to UTEP by two. And at the time, I'm like, wow, UTEP must stink if they can only beat Houston Baptist by two. But look what Houston Baptist is doing. They beat Texas Wesleyan 58-13. to Beat South Dakota. Now, South Dakota is a pretty decent team. 53-52. Northwestern State, 48-21. to And last week, remember I gave you the plays and I said, you know what, I'm not going to put Houston Baptist out as a play this week. Uh, but I want to mention Houston Baptist. Look what they did to Texas Southern. 749 yards offense. Beat them 68-31. to 31. The play I did put out as the uh, FCS play last week was Abilene Christian, plus the points over Incarnate Word. Now, if you would have told me Abilene Christian was going to have a 330-274 to 274 yard edge as the dog, a 21-19 first down edge, I would have said, give it to me again. And guess what? Incarnate Word somehow won that game 31-24, to despite being outgained and out first down in that game. When we look at Incarnate Word, they lost to UTSA by 28. They got past Texas Southern uh, 63-44. They did put up 746 yards on them. In fact, their stats are very similar. So Texas Southern, Texas Southern, almost identical stats there. Sam Houston State, they got whipped, and they beat Abilene Christian last week. Uh, Incarnate Words, the team that lost five games uh, last year. And, of course, everybody beat up on Houston Baptist last year. These two teams did not play. But I'm just high on Houston Baptist. Vic Sheely's there a seventh year. You wondered why with all these losses. Look at all these red here. And you're like, why'd they stick with the coach? Well, this is the reason. This is a completely different Houston Baptist team. And this week they're plus two and a half at home. Now, if you look at the average game grade out here, Houston Baptist is playing at an average game grade of 65.9. Incarnate Word at 50.1. So that says right there that Houston Baptist should be favored and favored by about 15 points. Once again, they are a home underdog in this one. Incarnate Word is a two and a half point road favorite. And I want to show you what you get with FCS. And this is probably a couple of teams. Look, you go back. Uh, even further than this, let's go to a major team in FCS, one that's been around. So these, some of these teams are newer. Uh, if you take a look at, let's say, North Dakota State. North Dakota State is a team that, oh my goodness, look at all this green. These guys never lose. They lost a game there. What the heck happened? 
Uh, they lost a couple games here, James Madison the final. But this takes you all the way back to 2011. You could look at any matchup, any game, see what the numbers were. And the last two years now, we've been putting in the average game grades. They actually did this after the season last year. So you could see what kind of level they're playing at for the year. Remember, average game grades just take into account the yards that they're producing and the strength of the opponent. So that's factored in, and there's your average game grade for the year. Right now, North Dakota State coming in. This number four is not correct. They're actually coming in number two right now uh, in the average game grades. But you get all that. Plus, you can go back and get the individual player stats for last year and see how they did in each team. You can see the games that Easton Stick had at QB for North Dakota State. So all that's available on every FCS thing. And there's so many games. There's so much value. And it's just uh, what is that? Twenty nine or twenty four dollars, and if you type in the code word winners, nineteen dollars gets you FCS only for the rest of the year. So the average game grade here says Houston Baptist by fifteen point eight. The my computer says Houston Baptist wins forty seven to thirty six, and the yards say Houston Baptist five seventy five to four eighty nine. So all that says Houston Baptist should be favored. They're a two-and-a-half-point dog in this game. I'm going to use an official play on Houston Baptist, plus two-and-a-half over Incarnate Word uh, as a selection. Now, the next selection we take a look at is going to be Monmouth against Wagner. And once again, I don't know very much about the FCS, uh, but when I click on the Phil Steele Plus site, I'm an expert on the FCS. And Monmouth against Wagner this week, Monmouth is on the road, and they're laying three points. Let's take a look at them, and we're going to go to Wagner. What's my mouse nickname? Oh, they're the Hawks. Okay, we just learned that. Uh, now we're going to go to Wagner, and we're going to see what we got over here. Here's Wagner. I keep in alphabetical order because I really don't know what uh, conference each team is in. Now let's take a look at how they've done this season. Well, Wagner's got a lot of red here. Now losing to Connecticut by three in FBS team, that's not bad. But East Stroudsburg, they lost 14-24. to East Stroudsburg is a Division three team. Now, Wagner, by the way, is a, uh, a team that, let's wait one second here, Wagner, yeah, it is Wagner, okay. So Wagner lost to East Stroudsburg, then they beat, lost to Stony Brook by 16 and Florida Atlantic by 35. You remember we had Florida Atlantic in that game, they were minus 35, unfortunately, big lead at the half, didn't tuck on a late touchdown. Uh, they beat Long Island last week, so Long Island's a pretty good win, right? Well, I don't know anything about Long Island. Is that a good win? Is it not a good win? Well, let's go click on the Long Island page. And guess what? Look at who Long Island was playing last year. Long Island was playing a Division Three schedule. So basically they beat a Division Three team that just moved up this year, one that is 0-3. I'm not going to count that Long Island win as very much of anything. Basically they beat a Division Three team and they lost to a Division Three team in East Stroudsburg. And now they're playing Monmouth. And Monmouth is a, a pretty good team. I believe last year, down the stretch here somewhere, I used Monmouth in one of these games. I believe it was Charleston Southern, and they dominated the game, and they won it 37-3. to So they're a pretty good team. They've got Bahar back at quarterback, and he's playing well. Uh, they've got Guerrero back at running back. So they've got the key pieces back from their offense. And last year, they were pretty doggone good. They went into Western Michigan, got beat. Western Michigan's a pretty good team. Uh, beat Lafayette at home beat Albany at home, and then went into Montana last week and lost. Now, um, if you take a look at this game here for Wagner, uh, the game against uh, Stony Brook, Wagner had four first downs after three quarters, got most of their stuff late. They only have nine returning starters coming back this year. And over here, Albany's a pretty good team, and Lafayette, I think, is a pretty decent team. They are playing to an average game grade of 62. Wagner's playing to an average game grade of 47. So that right there says that uh, Monmouth should be a 12-point favorite in this game. My computer has Monmouth with a 448, 331-yard edge, winning the game 35-26. to And as you could tell, I like Monmouth. I think they're playing well. When you look at Wagner, they were a team that was a losing team last year, appear to be a losing team this year. And Mama Slain, three points on the road. I can't imagine that the Wagner home field edge is worth that much. Take a look how they did at home last year. Uh, at home, they only lost by six points per game. Look at this. They were outgained by 101 yards per game at home. 
and only outgained by 27 yards per game on the road. So not much of a home field edge in that respect. And when you take a look at their two home edges so far this year, basically against a couple of Division three teams, now they're playing a real team, a real F- FCS team. I'm going to take Monmouth minus three over Wagner. So that's all available on all the FCS teams. If we take a look at uh, how these guys did last year, Bahar, who's back, threw for 251 yards in that game. Guerrero ran for 95. Those guys are back. Fari is supposed to be back. I'm not sure if he's playing this year or not yet, but uh, I like the fact that Bahar and Guerrero are back. All right, so you see what we could do for you in the FCS. It's just 19 bucks if you type in the code word winners. Let's go take a look at what we got available for you in the NFL. And this one's an interesting one. Uh, still kicking myself for two weeks ago, not sticking with the Vikings as a home favorite, and sort of went out of the box a little bit uh, going against the Saints with the quarterback injury system. Well, the Saints have paid that quarterback injury system now twice. They went on the road against Seattle. Nobody, including myself, expected them to play well. 12th man, Teddy Bridgewater starting, and they won. Now, how'd they win that game? They were outgained 515 to 265. They did it with defensive touchdowns, special teams touchdowns. They did it with mirrors, okay? And they somehow beat Seattle and dealt this Phil Steele plus to a loss. If you would have told me coming in, the Saints or the Seattle was going to have a 515, 265 yard edge, 2615 first down edge, I would have doubled up on that play, made it a double play. And instead, New Orleans came out with the win. Then last week, nobody really expected them to beat Dallas. They're a home dog. Once again, 266 yards offense. So since Breeze got injured against the Rams, this New Orleans Saints team is averaging just 258 yards per game, but they're off two impressive wins. Now, the injury system also says that once they get these big emotional wins where the whole team rallies around the fact that they're shorthanded, that it sort of comes back down to earth. And I think that might happen this week with Tampa Bay. The one thing I want to point out in this game, while Tampa Bay's 2-2 two and two and Saints are 3-1, and one, the Saints are being outgained by 70 yards per game. Meanwhile, Tampa Bay is outgaining their foes by six yards per game. And they're not playing chopped liver. San Francisco's a good team. They played Carolina on the road. They played the Rams on the road. And against the Giants, they had a big lead in that game. They were up 28-10 at the half, 311 to 152. And then the Giants uh, started the uh, Dave Brown era, who we talked about when we were doing the Duke. And now, can Tampa Bay win in New Orleans? I mean, that's a big question. Let's go back to last year. And let's see what they did when they visited the Saints. It's got to be on here somewhere. Here it is, opening game of the season. Oh, Tampa Bay beat the Saints, 48-40. Who's the quarterback of the Saints for that game? Naturally, in the NFL, you can click on individual player stats. It's all there. It was Drew Brees. Drew Brees hit 37-45 of for 439 yards in the opening game last year against Tampa. And the Saints still lost. So Tampa is now taking on Teddy Bridgewater, an offense that is averaging just 258 yards per game the last three games. They're off two max efforts. And the Saints used to be a great automatic play at home, much like Boise State. Remember, and then Vegas evened out the point spread on the Boise State games the rest of the year. Well, they've done the same thing with the Saints. And the Saints are now 12 21 and 1 as a home favorite since 2014. Tampa Bay, the last 11 years, 40 31 and 5 as an away dog. They've split the series with New Orleans each of the last four years. They're 4 and 4 against the Saints, so they know they can play with the Saints. They're better yards per game, much better yards per game. Shaq Barrett leads the NFL in sacks with nine for Tampa Bay. I find that surprising. Uh, they've got some key adi- other additions on the defensive line. So this is a Tampa Bay team that's the underdog in this game. I think they come out the winner, and I think the Saints, who have been just doing it with max effort the last two weeks, finally relax a little bit as a favorite at home, and Tampa Bay gets them. So there you have eight plays for Phil Steele Plus. Took you for a little tour of the site. By the way, one other thing I want to point out, uh, to, since I am showing you the site here, and by the way, if you like these videos, please make sure you subscribe. Yeah, I want to keep these things free. Everything is free. All you have to do is subscribe. Go ahead and hit that bell uh, on the YouTube video. When you hit the bell, we make sure we notify you that the next YouTube video is up. Uh, give me a like and the like column, and then give us your comments, what you'd like to see in our Wednesday news and notes. That's wide open for you. I supply a lot of different information. By the way, another play you might want to look at is that Missouri game I talked about, Missouri against Troy. Use that as a Wednesday play because not only did I give you Kelly Bryant as a fantasy player of the week, Missouri just dominates teams that are not 
Power Five, and you got to go with Missouri anytime they're not playing a Power Five team. Uh, so use that as a Wednesday play there. But one other thing I wanted to point out uh, with this, uh, let's well, I'll just click on any team randomly. You get the last 42 years results. Look at this for Northwestern. You get the halftime scores, the over unders, and this is on every game. All the way back to the halftimes go back to 2008, 2007. To, wow, the halftimes go back to 2003. The over-unders go back to 2003. And you can go back to 1976 and see what games did against the spread, whether they won or lost. Everything at your fingertips. Every FBS team has pages like this. 42-year history at your fingertips. Join Phil Steele Plus today. Inside the Press Box subscribers, you get it for free. I hope you learned how to use the site better. Make sure you're sure you make Make sure you subscribe. Eight free plays today. I'll have more for you next week. Have yourself a great weekend.